You know, it's so interesting. When I was in uh, Columbia College, when I when I was in Columbia College during that time, uh, that was around the time too that we were meeting with the Insomniacs. We're meeting in the garage at Brian and Steve's, and we were working on um, writing. And we we had a very a very collaborative vibe where there was no competition, there was no ego, there was no there's no like. Um, there's no like no one talked bad about each other no one stabbed each other in the back like everyone was just purely we let each other be who we were and I think what happened was because we all realized that we were all there for a harmonic vibe we were all there for a harmonic spirit and I think I was so spoiled with those times us reading our poetry to each other and us um, um, it was like you know now this day these days they call it a boot camp um, but it was in a sense our own boot camp where we could, uh, you know, I, I frequently thought of Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg and all those guys way back in the day and um, all the beat poets and all those guys, all those great um, artists who would hang out with each other and, and collaborate with each other. And, and and I was so spoiled with that ensemble mindset. And then when I went to Columbia College and there I got further training in exactly learning the definition of, oh, what you're doing this is a this is an ensemble mindset, and I didn't realize that that's what we had been doing with our our writing group that whole time. The ensemble mindset. So then they taught me that ensemble mindset about you know no one is any better than anybody else. All you know, uh, uh, um, just give your vibe to the project, to the project. Give your vibe to it, and everything else gets taken care of. And um, and oh my God, it was such a great vibe. And then at that time, I was in improv groups, which I was spoiled with even further, which was more yes and and opening up the mind. So I just want to say that, wow, that was such – it's all because of that, dude. That That's what helped me t- lift off with um, – lift off to, to California was all that great knowledge that I, I learned from you guys. I couldn't think of how to describe, like – Oh my god. It it was it was such a such a great feeling of that, you know, everybody's growing the same reality together. We're all in it together for the reality. Oh, and when the Wisniewski's were writing their book, remember when they were yeah, for their comic book, right? And they were asking for different character suggestions. Dude, that's awesome. Dude, dude, you know what? I would love to see you publish those Tempest books. What, you know, what even without I think publishing them, I'm going to publish them probably with your writing, my writing, um, and uh, probably like Beast Spirit, like I talked to my lawyer about it. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, I know for a fact that her was fine. So there. Well, dude, you know? yeah. I mean, what? So the issue is just that that they don't, they just don't they're they're embarrassed by their own writing. It's not the people that are embarrassed. I have to contact them all. Uh, some people don't want to publish, right? Some people don't want to publish about which is fair. Um, and the issue with my lawyer, my lawyer's basically now he's a family friend, but he's like every little move I make, he, he keeps an eye on me to make sure I'm just dumb. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and he's like, you don't, he's like, you're asking somebody who's wanting to publish, he read some of the stuff, loves it. And he's like, like, for example, from your stuff, he's like, get permission from Kurt, get permission from Jake. Then we can publish it, right? Because he's like, you don't have permission to publish it, you might be fine. He was like, think about it this way. He's like, what if you published it? And then he's like, oh, it's published without my permission. 
Oh. So I was talking. Yeah. So he was like, get permission from the people that say yes. So like, yeah. I figure I can get Jason. I'll get Jason. I'll get Greg. My sister will sign. So, I got so do you still like, have the original oh. files? Like, um, do you still have those original files I where you could just go, okay, I can reprint it without these? Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. Dude, you came out with so many volumes. You came out with, like, wasn't it, like, at least 10? There were more than... There was 30! I thought so! Holy moly, dude. Dude, you got so many. Now, would you... I mean, if you... Even if you came out with one of those a year for the next 30 years, you know, or imagine if you already got them and you come out with two of them, two of them a year, or shit, even three, one a month... Wow, man. You know, especially in this day and age, what I absolutely love so much, I mean, it just keeps coming back to me. Like, one of the big things that I always envisioned and hoped for was the idea that one day I would have my own network, tele- you know, my own network TV uh, stations, um, um, my own TV stations, my own radio stations, my own, just my own media kingdom. And and I, and I just like, just that idea of going, holy cow, we are each our, our own radio stations, we are each our own um, um, production companies now. I mean, we just got a cell phone. Bam, there's our camera. Bam, there it is. You know, it's, it's everything can be easily distributed on our own. I love it. It's so exciting. I mean, I still like the fact that you're doing the radio station stuff. I was like, I got a little mic at home with a fan and everything, and I've been using um, Adobe Audition to record stuff. Yeah. And I just got a little mic at home with a fan and everything, and I've been using Adobe Audition to record stuff. Yeah. I would guarantee less, less nervousness, you know? Yeah. It, it makes people less worried about what what their faces look like when they're saying certain sentences or, you know, whether they are just sitting in their pajamas or, you know. They well, just... I'm looking at the software for it. There's software for podcasting because I'm trying to figure out how to do, like, multiple channels. So if I did an episode and I had you on, I'm going to have you on and have, like, awesome. another Oh, dude. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, this is the thing is um, um, just to just to kind of, you know, just to kind of take stock of all, all the ways in which, you know, especially in this day and age where we have these ideas and we go, hey, wouldn't that be neat if we could create this? And sure enough, already uh, most of this stuff that we've imagined, it's already come about out there in the world. Like it's already – it's like, oh, wouldn't that be neat if this – bam. Now all of a sudden – so it's like it gives us so much um, – more assuredness and and uh, uh, intuition with our vibes and imagination of going, I want to do this. Well, now I know I have the idea and it can be done very easily, effortlessly, and just like just out there in the world. Like, and, and what's so exciting is like we now become the distributors of this stuff. Like for instance, with Anchor, I could distribute it to <clears> – <throat> Um, it immediately distributes it to iTunes and like four other podcast sites. Now, I've been going through my research and uh, finding a buttload of different resources. I'm going to be writing an article about this, but I just went down another rabbit hole. I thought I was finished when I went up to number 20, but now I found a whole uh, other cavalcade of, of 
resources that I've been sending it off to and getting word on. So once I get the word back from that, I'm going to I'm going to publish that all in a big big old article. But what I can do is it um let's say for instance if you sign up for for Anchor um What's so cool is that already just goes right up to iTunes. So anybody can just subscribe, bam, right there, easily, effortlessly. This stuff gets distributed, and it's I, it, it goes into apps. So now anyone who's got a podcast app, like, I mean, dude, I can give you a list of all these different podcasts, like the popular ones that I've submitted to, and they just go, yep, okay, we like it. And I'm going, wow, that's crazy. I'm now my own radio station. <laughs> and the same thing for you with all the information that you have about drawing, all the tips about drawing, all the information. I mean, you could have a whole variety podcast just about, you know, uh, uh, your experiences, your process. You could tell all of your stories. You're a great storyteller uh, about what you went through in having your, your, having your uh, corporate job, having one foot in that and going, you know what? I'm going to dare myself to go into uh, 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 renting out a table at a convention and putting putting out my art. And that first step that you ever did that, when was that? What year was that? Um, let's see, this is 2018, so 20, last year was the first year I went solo, so it was 2016, at the beginning of last year, so the beginning of 2017. Now, is that, okay, so... Is that when your fir- your first show was? You the first time that you actually oh, went no. to a show. First show was in 2014. Okay, okay. So so in that sh- sh- short four years, you've already been able to quit your quit your corporate job and and just purely go full time. You know, into drawing, going out touring at all these different conventions. I mean, the fact that you gave yourself see your current self right now is looking at this and living this and all of that back there the guy in 2014 is someone it, just a memory in their in our brains how funny is that that you actually lived through that world <laughs> and little did he realize that this guy right now would exist but he trusted that he would exist otherwise he wouldn't have taken those first steps i love that idea it's so crazy it just wraps it itself up in this nice bow of infinity um so you okay? That first time, what was that first show that you go? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give myself. Uh, I'm gonna trust myself and just go out to this first show and test it. So honestly, I created a fan art piece and I was like not sure if I wanted to do it or not. And then my buddy Sean was one who was like, "Look at the fan art piece you made." I'm like, "Nah, he's like, come on, man, take a shot." I'm like, "I only have eight pieces," but he's like, "Just do it. Let's just try it." And he starts signing me up for it. So I'm like, "All right." And, you know, with uh, having only eight pieces, I made all my expenses back, which is amazing. Uh, but what's crazy, what's really, really fun about it was the amount of, like, uh, I don't want to use attention, but it was like the love I was getting to my work. You know, like my style was different, right? So that's what people always see about my work. They're like, it's different. It's not, um, it's not the same like everybody else. Wow. Wow. Dude. Wow. And you were saying because you're highly inspired by abstract art. people yeah Yeah. 
Yeah, half the fun is trying to uh, wade through the 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 mishmash of colors. It's half of the fun is trying to kind of make sense of it in your own brain, and and but seeing it in front of you as like just the pieces. But you're going, okay, I'm 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 imagining this into a a a you know a thing with lines drawn around it, so to speak. You know, you're like you're kind of trying to like go, you know, it really forces you to use your imagination, which is beautiful. Yeah. Dude, you know what? What a great way of redefining something because, you know, okay, so we all have that intention of going, okay, I want to stay true to my imagination. You know, I view this as like a sacred child and I, I, I want to honor it. I want to get exactly what's done in my imagination. Now, if we were taught that we appreciate both that and, as you're saying, the happy accidents, which also David Lynch loves to say, the happy accidents where there seems to be a, quote, technical difficulty – you, you. If we're taught to embrace that and go, that's actually an actual extra addition. That's that's a wink from the universe. That's a high five from the universe. Going, hey, I want a hand in this. I like what you're doing. I'm gonna add something to it that you didn't expect. Okay, but just incorporate it, please. You know, and if we are to like accept it that way, oh my god, just ama- just imagine the the amazing amount of output there there would be. Oh my god, how brilliant. Wow, what a fun exercise that would be for an artistic outing. I've been thinking so much more lately about getting into painting because that is really tr- my truly. But I've been thinking about that. I, I was I was thinking about the idea of as you were telling me this, how cool that would be for a bunch of writers to go out with their canvases and their their uh, um, uh, their paints and everything, and they go, okay, um, every forty minutes, you you know you 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 must paint for forty minutes. You must have a finished painting. Um, and you were all, you know, you each kind of got your own little area that you're looking at. And then, bam, you got another 40 minutes. And you got another 40 minutes. You got another 40 minutes. And it would be such a fun way to train 
to train someone to be able to see how fast they could capture um, that stuff, you know, in, in such a short amount of time. That would be such a great, such a great exercise, I think. I mean, that's like, uh, I've been a light drawing class down here where they say, we do short sessions, right? We have to model in front of you. And the first couple sessions, they'll say, we're going to draw for a minute. You really can't draw a person in a minute. It's fucking hard, okay? <laughs> you know, I, I kind of have an idea of where the shapes are going to go. I'm not that good at it. And I've only met a couple of people who like are that good at it, right? I only know so many artists who get that 40 minute mark and it's like, you're seeing work. I work for 40 minutes, it still looks like I only worked on it for 20, right? Because I'm not that good at anatomy. But that's good exercise. Good exercise to have. Like, um, and another exercise is just drawing. Like when I was, in, I was just in Germany for a week, okay? Um, the group I was with was probably the laziest and teaching family ever. They wanted to sleep every day from like 2 to 8. Whoa. Or, yeah. Which meant when they went down for their nap, which I would just call sleeping, uh, I would just go on my own. And I would go exploring. And I was like sitting at a bar and like, um, I found some bars and local bars. And I just sat there with my, I've been drawing a lot on my iPad. Awesome. So I'm like random things, you know, like cups and uh, the tables and the chairs and the people. And I was trying to draw shapes. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I don't, you know, I'm getting better at it. And it's cool because I make friends. I went, you know, I make some friends that way. And I see, like, oh, you're an artist. And I'm showing my work. And they'd be like, oh, that's really nice. And, and my head, I was like, please don't rob me from my iPad. Like, <laughs> right. You know, let me, just let me get back to the hotel. But I made a lot of friends while I was there. Uh, you know, I, when we were in Berlin, I made friends with the security guard in the hotel and his friends and his girlfriends. They're all nice people who really like artists. You know, it's like Berlin's got a huge, like, renaissance uh, for the arts. And it's insane. And it's one of the few places I've been other than Paris where, like, they find out you're an artist. You're like, what a feel over there. Which is kind of a cool feeling. You know, it's a cool feeling when you go to a party and someone's like, that guy's the artist. And everyone's like, oh. That's awesome. You know, it's a cool feeling. I'm, I, you know, I, 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 I rarely get that feeling out here, right? Like, well, what I do, it's like, I relish it. It's like, yeah, man. I'm like fucking Gandalf up in this thing. It's you know, great. Like, so you're out in, what were you doing in Germany? Uh, so my friend, uh, Michael, who works for United Airlines, he's going on a flight. He got some deal for he's like, Do you want to go to Germany for a week? Oh my and god. So I was like, Yeah, his family and myself, but I, him and I shared a room, and his son and his ex wife were in a room. They're friends, apparently. It's fine. But he's like, You know, we're going to Frankfurt, we'll go to Berlin, we'll go to Munich. And Munich is very old school still. But uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I post some photos. I went to the castle, which is amazing. I went to the castle that inspired Walt Disney. Oh I, my I, god! I, Whoa, so, dude! In that castle that he basically copied that in. You for, gotta be kidding me. You know. So, the magic castle that you go to Disneyland and you see, that is the castle? That is the castle. It's called Knock Knock Du Schwenstein. Dude. Dude. Um, type it in. It's basically King Ludwig. The, the Mad King Ludwig. It's like second to last castle he built. Um, look it up. Like, the, the castle that you see, the Magic Kingdom. Is designed after this castle um, on the outside, okay? The inside of this castle is full of rooms. There's like, there's like 75 rooms versus the Magic Kingdom that has no rooms, right? I think it has one room. Because um, it's just the one. You ever been to Disney World? That castle is just a facade, okay? Right, right. Outside. But there's other things in this castle that, like, there's a giant painting of a forest that is the very painting they use that Disney pretty much sketched while he was in there because you can't take photographs. Right, he gets like a madman, but that forest will be used for Bambi. Uh, dude! The castle itself has got all these outlooks and 
stuff is used, like you see, like uh, the, the area they use for uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Uh, there's other paintings in there that inspired uh, a lot of Disney. I mean, you can look it up and then just look up Disney versus that castle. I guarantee you, this dude took multiple trips to that castle and it just gets like a madman because there's so many influences in there. It's amazing. God, that's incredible. That's so cool that you were there. Did you feel like? Did you feel? Did you soak it in, or you're like, dude, Walt Disney was hanging around in this castle, and I'm looking at this painting that he was looking at. An old hanging around in this castle. Like I got to go to the like they showed us the dining room, the kitchen, the bedroom, like the bedroom that they took him away from. I was like, his old bed is still there. I'm like, what? Oh, I was like, yeah. Like so, this you know the whole story behind Imagine Ludwig is he wanted. He would be called the fairy tale king, okay? He was a he was totally an artist, you can tell. He had visions of building his castle. He didn't want to rule he didn't want he was the last king of Bavaria. He didn't want to rule Bavaria. He wanted to be a fucking like fucking fantasy painter is what he wanted to be. Like, oh my god. Incredible. We called him the Swan Swan King because he was in love with this fairy tale from Germany about a guy who the knights and travel the all over the castle. Wait, wait, so the, wait, the fairy tale is about someone who, a guy who falls in love with a swan? Is that what you said? It's a knight that travels around in a period full by swan. Oh, a chariot that looks like a swan. Yeah, like, you know how Thor rides on a chariot pulled by, like, words, I think? Oh, it's pulled by a swan. Pulled by a swan. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. So, did he try to... Recreate some of that stuff in the king kingdom. Look out for fucking fantasy world, man! It's amazing. It's like being at Disney without the ride. Okay. Whoa. Like, wallpaper. I got the book. I had to buy the book because the only art. Right, the wallpaper got on is uh, family crest is Saint George, who's known for slaying the dragon. You know the story of Saint George. So there's tons of paintings in there of Saint George fucking slaying dragons on a horse with a lance. Dude, crazy, what the hell, dude? That would be a fun story to bring to a movie, you know, to make a movie from. That guy sounds f- awesome. Yeah, so like, I was just like, hang on a second, okay? Hold on a second. I got a second, okay. So did he ever, uh, did he ever dress up like some of these characters? That's all right. Oh, yeah, so, like, so you wait. So real quick, you're arriving at your next location now for your for where you're going to be setting up. Yeah, I, well, we're there, we're here a day early. Like my friends and I are staying at the hotel. So um, what? Basically, set up in the morning. What's the name of the convention? Uh, Oregon Game Fair. And then where where exactly is it being held at? Columbus, Ohio. Oh, cool. Oh my god. Do you know what your table number is or anything yet? So, like. Um, I posted it on Twitter the other day. I think it's like. Uh, I can share it with you once I'm not driving. I know my booth number. I have a corner. I got a corner this time, man. I ain't fuck around. I got two tables. I got a bunch of. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff. Like, I'm going to be there for like two weeks. Like, I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for like two weeks. I'm going to be there for Oh, that's incredible. Um, and everyone said the colors, my, my tables are so colorful that they can see me from, like, down the way. Oh, that's great. Oh, so how many how many pieces have you brought with you today? Um, prints, I have 15 pieces of metal. I have 10 different pieces of oxygen. I've got a lot of work. I'm hoping, you know, this show last year, I think I made I made close to eight. Wow, so, that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm hoping for the same numbers. 
Wow, dude. That is so exciting. I mean, just the fact that you believed in your vision, you you followed your instincts, you said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and try out these shows and Oh yeah, so okay, so when you did that first show you 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 sold all your pieces, and then was that enough? That was just you were hooked then, huh? After you did that first show, you were just like, okay. At that first show, I literally made eight hundred dollars. Okay. Oh, oh my god. I was, I was excited to be at a show showing my work. I remember that Sunday, Sean took over the last five hours of the show, so I had to go to a local wedding. So I remember I left the show, went to the hotel room, changed into my suit, went to a wedding, but I. Was I wasn't even, everyone's like, you're so happy to be here. I'm like, I'm just happy because I just did this show where I made all this money, which being 800 bucks, I was like, that's the most money I've ever made on a weekend. Yeah, right? well, and also the fact that it was your art that you sold that made you that I'm money. Like, like, dude. Exactly. I didn't make 800 bucks, like, sewing lawn. Like, I made 800 bucks working a show about <laughs> my art. Oh, oh, you know? oh, how satisfying. So, like, you know, and then, like, um, I remember after that show, my next show, that was like 800 bucks, right? 800 bucks. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of fine. Like, who would it be? And then I remember the next show after that was Wizard World. I think it was Wizard World or Indiana. I think it was Wizard World, where I did, I did okay. I did, I think I did like a thousand bucks, maybe, maybe a little more. And I was like, that's awesome, you know? Like, I just made a little bit more than I made at the last show. But then, we went to Indiana. And I remember when I did the show in Indiana, my buddy Yancey came with me, and we were, we were doing the show, and I made $3,000, right? Mm. Holy crap, what just happened? Dude! What just happened? Whoa! So like, so, like, that's when I was like, that's when I actually had that, like, I, I guess you'd call it an epiphany, right? Where, Big time. And I was like, oh, that's good art, but in my head, I was like, oh, like your style. You're on something. Dude. Like, working, you know, like, so, I remember that's what I was doing. And then I remember I did, you know, I, I went to a uh, working shop one year, and that's where I was, like, starting to, like, I remember the workshop was more like, why aren't you working on your own stuff? Like, why are you still working on fan art, right? And I was just like, I don't know, because I, it's the easiest thing I can make. And, yeah, I first I remember uh, when I first did Jupiter, my night of Jupiter, he took me three months, right? Because I had no clue what I'm fucking doing, right? I'm just like, I'm gonna create my own character, right? We just, I, I challenge you, Kurt, to make your own character this, this, this week. And you okay, about okay, it. I'm gonna you know, go ahead and try that. That you've, you've inspired me. And have fun with it. Don't do what I did, overthink you, okay? Right. Have fun with it. What I realized later with my later characters was when I had fun with it, I could finish a character in like a week. But when I wasn't having fun with it, and I was overthinking it, like, because in my head I was thinking, uh, everyone knows how to draw Batman. Batman's easy to draw. Everybody knows how to draw Spider-Man. Spider-Man's easy to draw. Nobody knows how to draw The Night of Jupiter. I don't even fucking know what he looks like. Right? <laughs> That's great. I don't even know what he looks like. I don't even know what he looks like. Yeah. I had this idea of him wearing a red coat and him, like, you know, uh, hang on a second, all right? I gotta see this direction here. How many times? One, three, four? Yeah. So, like, I had this vision of him, and what I've learned over the years is do a mind map, okay? So you basically draw. Don't even draw. you like, like, my character, for example, Jupiter, okay? It's called the Knight of Jupiter. And I wrote I that down, and then I'm like, what does he look like? Alien. So I wrote the word alien down. He's wearing a long coat. Uh, initially, he was headless, but he has a head now. He's got four arms. He's got a, uh, a crystal that's in the middle of his forehead, kind of like Vision, but it doesn't operate like Vision. It gives him a higher higher focus. Um, little things, so, like, I made a whole mind map, right? It just went on forever, okay? It's long. It's, like, 30 different things I wrote down, basically. Um, and you take all that, and then you, it helps you create the piece, right? When you're creating the piece now, you're looking at it going, okay, do I have the four arms in here? Do I have the red coat? Do I have the crystal? Like, if you have an attitude for your character, write that down. Does my character own that attitude? Right? Dude, that's awesome. And that's the kind of, like, 
So, like, I'm working on a piece called The Black Road, which is not black nor a road. But that's, that's the name of it. It doesn't have to look like a road. These are things I'm learning, okay? It doesn't have to look like a black road. That's called a black road. <laughs> but that's like, <laughs> yeah. You describe an artifact that speaks into your brain and gives you knowledge. Like, it's got a whole bite up. It looks like a galaxy swirling. So, like, when people when people read about it, like, so basically they're going to read about it and then when they see it, it should look like it, right? It should look like what I just wrote. Oh, that's awesome. That's Man, so how many pages do you think you're gonna bu- your book is gonna be? It's still called called the Ancient Ones, right? Let me call you right. Let me call you right back, Kurt. Okay. Bye. What's up, man? And there you have it. A uh, little interview with Alan Panicle, phenomenal artist, friend of mine. Uh, we used to have a writer group, writers group together called the Insomniacs, and then he put out. Uh, some publications called the Tempest Writers. Uh, so that felt good to be able to get him on here, huh? That was great. So I better uh, better edit this, get this, get this into anchor. Talk to you later. Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto. going to read to you from another smidgen of my idea book. <clears throat> so each of these is a little bit, a little bit here.
And now for another episode of, quote, Petting My Furry, unquote. Scurvy Movie. A man who predicts that California will stay attached and there will never be a big one. Uh, teach the audience to want to cook for something. Teach the audience to want to cook for something. <clears throat> Game show. Quote, What's your personal address? Unquote. They ask people in the street... What is your personal address? If the person says, That's personal. The interviewer goes, Exactly! Then gives that person a free t-shirt. A game show where they reveal real life people's home addresses on the air, even celebrities. Quote, Diplomatic Immunity, unquote. Movie. Diplomatic Immunity. A man is looking out at the wind, windy rainy day, talking to it, asking it if it would like to switch channels to a more favorable one. Where the sun is out and it's warm, he hears a dog attack off in the distance and says out loud, Wow, I hope that person is all right. Man too can be heard from inside saying, Come on back in. The Yahtzee is getting cold. <laughs> Build your own time machine. They bring camera inside box. Quote, What's your time zone? Twilight zone. See paranormal activity. Oh, here's an idea. Uh, underwater zombies. I don't know if that was something that was invented or not yet. Uh, where are we? Blue Bob. Make video for Blue Bob. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, GIFs that come to life. GIFs that come to life when a mouse is dragged over certain areas. Oh, this is from when I performed at House of Blues. April 1st, House of Blues. 7.30, 40 minutes, $10 cover. Matt Do Doherty of the middle class, Cassia Conway of All Wrong, and the plans change. Chaz Sutton from the city beneath. Ask audience how many are connected to the internet, and I have a Facebook moment, and a Twitter moment. Video cameras, YouTube accounts, talk about friends, fun stories, and out copies of the comic. New Max Neptune episodes at every show. People look forward to reading the new ones. Oh, that was one of my plans. I was going to make a... I, I have a, a Max Neptune comic that I've been working on. So that was the plan. Each time I perform, and I was performing under the moniker, moniker. I rarely ever, if ever, use that term, but moniker. My moniker was, I am an orphan, which is hearkening back to the ideas of uh, the, the Blues Brothers. Oh, I wrote something here, hang gliders. Asking David Lynch to use his music in a film. Quote, life happens, get on the bus, unquote. Uh, hand out 3D glasses for the audience. Ah, here's the address, okay, flyer. Address, date, times, all ages, doors open, 6.30, 7.30. 7.30, Kirk London from Max Neptune. <laughs> 8.30, Matt Doherty from the middle class. 9.30, Cassia Conway of All Wrong and Plans Change. 10.30, Chaz Sutton from City Beneath. 8430 Sunset Boulevard, West Hollywood, California, 90069.
Kurt Clendenin and the Menacing Thumb. Bring Tom York's pick. Oh yeah, that's right. I played a show with a pick. Tom York, my friend Lindsay Block, gave it to me. <clears throat> There's something in here that seemed really interesting. So... Oh, this was something. Putting binaural beats under videos. Kurt Schwitters combined with Nine Inch Nails. Get a hold of Ken Nordine and Bray, Ray Bradbury. Well, that was before Ray Bradbury died. Uh, a man who claims he's responsible for getting all those popular videos, the hits. Hollywood Cemetery movie. Oh, oh, here, look at this. My lyrics. This book I must have brought with to the to the show. Have students draw their most ideal realities. Their most craziest dream. Okay, uh okay. So Where's this? Ah, here we go. You're going to have a mini concert right here. Just a couple of these songs. Here we go. Here we go. This one's called I Wish I Did. Shine, shine, shine The shows when you open the door A line, line, line All the elements that you have in store Or you say I wish I did I wish I did I wish I did I did. Wish I did. I really wish I did. What information do you know about how harmony flows and all our different ways that move? Quite the same Your vibe, vibe, vibe Has felt through everything you do It's time, time, time To gift us the realest you That one's called Wish I Did. This one is called Unexpected, which I unexpectedly realized it's about a palindrome. It's about infinity. It's about 
You are what you eat. You are. It's about precipitation. Anyway, here we go. Teachers teach you what you need to be taught. T-shirts teach you wit, and you just learned it. Senses, they make sense of what you're sensing. Senses, plural scent, but your two senses. out this time pieces piece by piece now you fixed it it's coming round it's coming round it's coming round can't hear a sound it's coming round coming around It's coming around Can't hear a sound It's unexpected. The, the uh, song version of that the uh, recorded version of that was recorded with Lawrence August and Crafty St. James. That is out there somewhere. I believe it's on soundcloud.com slash CEC or soundcloud.com slash I am an orphan. We're going to see if I can remember the chords to this. This is Dimension 5, originally in the recording. Uh, Carrie Hard Hardwick, uh, she, she lent her vocals, and it was just a, such a beautiful thing, so... Let's see, let's see if I could do justice, justice to this. I have a hard time sleeping at night. My brain puts up too much of a fight. In the state of amaze and astound, information throws me to the ground. I'm Than the speed of thought, Roy G. 
Biv is bigger than we were taught. I crawled inside and among the clouds. I swim through oceans of verbs and nouns. Uh, 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 uh. My master mind moves around every angle possible. My master mind. Inside Dimension 5 uh oh Dimension 5 uh oh Dimension 5 uh oh Here it comes As I'm receiving Morse code signals from the universe and all around, I always get the cosmos low down. Ah, 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 ah. my master mind. That was Dimension 5, and when that song came to me, just like I wish I did, those songs, BAM! Blasted me, blasted me, blasted me. The thoughts came to me so fast, so fast. And I later found out during a, let's just say a shamanistic trip at the Love Seed Festival, I, re I, I heard all of these songs that came to me. Unexpected was one of them, too. Uh, one is another one is Cosmic Children. Do I have that here? I got Great Unknown. I sang for that for you guys the other day. Oh. Huh. Let's try this. Let's try this. Huh. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. This was written uh, by Lawrence August. Let's see if... We're going to try to remember these. Oh, man. I would love it if I could remember this. Oh, my God. Let's see. I can only chew a meter, but I bit a quarter mile. Now I'm hoping that the dentist can fix this broken smile. Words are worth a little, but actions pay the price. Deserted in the middle of pain and paradise. Believe it now, believe it now, believe me now. I didn't want to leave you out, but see now you're now I'd rather never be around clinging to ideals still thinking what is real singing how I feel bitter sweet the meal 
victory's abandoned, I'm losing my companion. Two feet but barely standing on a ship that has no captain. Believe it now, believe me now, I didn't want to leave you out. See now, you're grieving now. I'd rather never be around Silence lost its luster In the quiet, quiet of a hushed word Screams of soft insanity A scene of lost calamity I bit the hand I fed In this fit that I the word Turning in my bed, that burning in my head. I'm leaving now, believe me now. I didn't want to leave you out. But see now, you're grieving now. I'd rather never be around. Never be around. I'd rather never be around. I'd rather never be around.